So I have bad news. My iPhone, my iPhone 8 has began taking water. And if you are noticing at all, the video is going to look quite terrible. The reason why is on the inside of my camera lens, there is actually water. But we're going to try to get through this anyway as well as we can. So the first thing that we need to do is make sure that we have the Microsoft Remote Desktop app installed and running on our Mac OS system. My username is administrator and my password is staple horse. And we can continue with the insecure um, SSL cert because we don't have a proper signed cert. But anyway, what we need to do now is go over to the Microsoft website and we need to do this option of get the MSI, but I'm going to select uh, network, network monitoring right here. Um, and that's through doing the F12 option. And it's gonna ask me for a name. I'm just gonna kind of type random garbage, random garbage, company size, two to four. Job title, analyst, work, email, um, let's see, da -da -da, da -da 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 com. copy and paste that a few times, and so that's what we have, the country, uh, United States, All right, so then yes, continue, well, Enter a valid phone number. Okay, it wants a valid phone number, fine. Uh, what about... Okay, how's that? So now I'm trying to download the file. I'm gonna sort by size. So now we have the Windows Admin Center MSI, which is right here. That's a really small file. But anyway, it's showing that it is 344 bytes and I'm going to control click and copy the link address. And I will go in here, full screen, and I'm going to CD, uh, CD, into the C drive, and now I'm going to use the wget command and paste. So it's saying wget's not recognized, I need to go into PowerShell. And now I need to do wget and paste it in. Now it's saying the response content cannot, uh, here, hold on, let's see. So use basic parsing. Fine, we'll use basic parsing. So now we are getting the bytes. While this is doing its thing, we are going to open up our notes and there is there is this here, not sure how well you can see that, but I took this from a website and I'm going to copy it. Okay, come on, let's go. Not real sure how big this is.
Okay, it's done. Let's view the directory. So I'm going to make a directory named temp and I am going to re w get that stuff, but I'm going to set an out file to C. I'm just going to match this up here and do, do a control click. Hold on. I'm just going to copy and paste this. So I'm just matching up, uh, matching up this command here, right here, and matching it up with my wget command involving the use basic parsing with the out file, and I'm just copying and pasting in to match up that MSI. So it's probably going to take some time again, so that's not very beautiful that it's going to take more time. But once this is going, we should we should have execution. And what this will allow us to do is have um, the the web interface available to control the virtual environment, and it will be running on our will be running on our beautiful machine on port four four three. Now keep in mind, it's probably a good idea if you're going to set stuff up like this, to set up a VPN and connect into the VPN before you go about connecting into web interfaces and remote desktop and all that stuff across the world wide web. You don't want to expose yourself to the entire internet with a potentially vulnerable solution. That is how you get hacked. So if you are going to end up opening this stuff up and not have a VPN, for example, make sure to at least have, you know, like an IDS or have an IDS, IPS, or just have, have a good firewall, right? You don't want to get yourself destroyed because that's not good. And just kind of a random update, I do have an iPhone 12 coming tomorrow so the videos will get better and also hopefully hopefully you enjoy these videos because they're kind of like it's fun little lessons learned for me so I just executed that MSI and you can see my mouse my mouse is loading right I'm starting to see some things pop. Also, as a side note, you can run the system information tool, which is kind of cool. So then you can go into system summary and like look at, and just look at stuff. Like your installed memory, total virtual memory. Yeah, just kind of neat stuff. So you also can run Notepad, you can run Task Manager, all that good stuff. But anyway, um, I, I'm gonna go ahead and well, yeah. So here you go. So. Not sure if you can read this because blur, but msinfo32.exe is in system32. 
and notepad is in there. So this is kind of neat, neat that you can go through and start executing random stuff and, and see what runs, what doesn't run, kind of trial and error. Um, but anyway, let's uh, let's just pray that this iPhone 12 gets here quick because this autofocus is really terrible when you have liquid on the inside of your camera lens. I mean, look at that keyboard. You can't see a damn thing. So, I mean, I guess, I don't know. But anyway, what we're gonna do now is get the IP address of the system, which is right here. And we are going to copy it. And then I'm gonna get out of RDP and I'm gonna open my internet browser. And I am just loading this IP address. I am just loading the server's IP address in my browser, but I am using um, HTTPS, right? So that's important. HTTPS, yeah, HTTPS, on slash slash your server's IP. Then you're gonna need to go to advanced and continue on through. And it's going to require authorization to, to get in. This is just gonna be your admin login. So administrator, staple horse. So I ended up doing administrator staple horse. And you can see I can now come in here and select add. And I can add uh, here I can add Azure VMs, I can add server clusters, servers, connect to Windows 10 PCs. So we've got all that good stuff. Um, inside here, we've got all connections. We can do server manager, or we can come into computer management, cluster management. Uh, we've also got uh, view, view PowerShell scripts up on the right. So we don't have any scripts for this area. Try a different tool, notifications. Anyway, long story short, we've just got, we have access now to come in here and we can add uh, different different hosts right or this windows system right here right if i click on this windows system once i click into it i now have i now have uh, kind of some settings here i can go in at the bottom left the virtual machines and now I can actually add virtual machines into the server, right? So I can do new, I can import, uh, I can click on PowerShell. And now I actually have PowerShell. But now it's gonna prompt me for my password, staple horse. Let's do who am I? So stuff works. We can see the list of running processes. It's kind of cool to have this all right from an interface. I think if I'm not mistaken, I have that um, MS. Let's see if we can scroll to the M's. Oh yeah, I'm a MS Info 32. So if I click on it, I can then click end process up here. I'm gonna select yes, I want to end it. And it just said that it successfully ended the process. So now it's no longer running. I can click into storage and see what kind of storage we've got. And here we can see I've got a disk, I've got a disk I've got a disk zero and a disk one. You can see I've got 233 gigs and 2.73 terabytes. So a lot of a lot of areas here to you know, have have virtual storage for the VMs that I built. But anyway, 
I'm done making making videos for the night. I'm gonna go straight to bed. I need to get some good rest, but I just wanted to make at least one video tonight and I have, so I'm done.